Dan Buckley. And I'm Jason Langley. And we, we are, are two of the cast of Fisherman's Friends, the musical, which We've is got on. one Fisherman's Friends and one Fisherman's Friends manager. manager. And we are touring the UK with the show until the end of May. Yeah, we're hitting up Cambridge, Leicester, Richmond, Wimbledon, various other places that I can't think of now. Um, you're watching Mickey Joe Theatre, um, and we are honoured to be featured in this vlog. Not worthy, not worthy. <laughs> Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my stagey YouTube channel. If you're meeting me for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am a theatre critic and content creator here on YouTube, and you are watching Oh My God Hey! My weekly vlog series that follows myself and my stagey boyfriend Aaron James. Hello. As we adventure around uh, the UK, seeing a lot of different theatre. This week you're going to see like one day from the week before and then three days from the previous week because unusually I just had like one surprisingly uneventful week so that's why there wasn't a weekly vlog last week but there is one today and there will be another one next weekend and then after that it gets a little bit exciting because we are going international. We are going to Broadway and so you're going to get vlog content but it's going to be it's going to be Broadway vlog content. I can't even, I can't even talk about it because, um, because we haven't finished packing yet and it's stressing me out. But very much looking forward to that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the very exciting content that is coming soon. I hope that you enjoy this week's Oh My God Hey. Oh My God Hey. Hello. Today we find ourselves in, let's pause for five seconds to play another exciting game of Name That High Street. Anybody? 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 It's Richmond! We are in Richmond today on our way to a very exciting uh, little event. A little thing, a little, a little pop-up, a little flash mob, if you will. A little uh, press and content opportunity in Richmond with the show that's currently here this week, which you will find out about in just a few moments. Today is a very busy day in uh, our lives and in the theatre industry in general. What's happening today, Aaron? The Olivia Award nominations are being announced whilst I'm in a meeting. Yes. It's unfair. Aaron's in a meeting uh, and the rest of us will be getting excited about the Olivier Awards. Who's to say? Depends what they are. It's, it's all very unknown because the Olivier Awards are always surprising. Always surprising. There's always something. Yeah. There's whether always it's someone missed out. Yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be snubs. The categories are very small, with only four nominees often in acting categories. It's uh, we're gonna see some snubs. We're gonna see some people uh, getting left out. We might see some upsets as well. There's a lot of question marks. Um, there's various non-binary performers. We don't know how they're gonna be nominated. Um, and there's a lot that just hasn't been disclosed. Yeah. So that's gonna be happening today. I'm gonna to be doing a live stream so I can just react in real time. Um, no idea where we're gonna to go to do that, but hopefully we'll just find a coffee shop somewhere for Aaron to have his Zoom meeting and me to do a live stream. It's very loud today in Richmond. It's very loud. And we're on our way to a bridge. Literally. Just a bridge. Just a bridge. We're passing the Orange Tree Theatre as well. So as well as the Richmond Theatre that I showed you the other week, there's another theatre in Richmond that we're going to walk past right now. More of like a little studio space, I gather. And it's called the Orange Tree Theatre. Here it is. I think we're going to go past the front entrance. Stay on the line, caller. Oh, this is the office. It was to the side. It was next to it. Fine. This is this is this is the office entrance. If you're coming here for administrative reasons, um, but yes, at some point we'll have to do like a Richmond two show day. Yeah. Yeah. Two shows in Richmond. If you have no idea where Richmond is, it's um, well, it took us eight minutes to get here from Clapham Junction, so it's just a little way. You could take the district line from Central London, or you could take the overground. Um, and it's just a little bit west, out of central London, but still in London. Where are we going? Do you see a bridge? Yeah. I'm in the market for a bridge. I mean, all the water's that way. Follow the river. Follow the river <coughs> to a bridge. Don't trust Mickey with directions. If you've been watching these videos for some time, you may know that geography is not my strong suit. I'm quite good with map reading, normally. I was just in a rush and in a panic and trying to do too many things and... And so we were much closer to the bridge and then we spent seven minutes walking in the wrong direction. So we've now got on a bus to try and get us back to where we need to be. Taking a bus 
to the Richmond Bridge. And we've almost reached where we were seven minutes ago. We were so early. We were too early. We were too confident. We went to go get Leon. It was there. It was right there. Look at my face. It's as in. We'll be fine. Yay for the bus. Okay, we're off the bus. We are now on foot. I was not planning for this for this day to be as fast-paced and dramatic as it's now become. Oh look, Erin, there's a Bills! Oh uh, yeah. There's a Bills! And hopefully also a bridge. I think I see a bridge. I see a bridge. Good. <sighs> I thought I heard the old man say, Hoop John, get a connect to Ryan. Today, today is a holiday. Hoop John, get a connect to Ryan. To Ryan, oh, to Ryan. John to Ryan. So how's it been? Because you've been touring to a few places already. How's the tour been treating you? It's been great. I have to say, I've, oh, well, I think it's been great. I think it's been fantastic. The audience response everywhere we've been has been really quite heartwarming, yeah, actually. Every time. Overwhelmingly every time, it's positive. Not, it's not a surprise every time, but it's it's just it's it's just amazing. It never gets old, I think is what I'm trying to say. It never gets old. The feeling of that response after every show is just it's, yeah, it's amazing. We it's, get really vocal audiences by the end of the show. I've never been in a show that lets you know how much they've enjoyed it as much as this one. Yeah, and I'd say the the general demographic being that vocal is also just really impressive to me. Yeah, I think it's great. And obviously, people come to the show with a bit of knowledge from the film. Maybe they've seen this film, or maybe they just have no idea what to expect and we've heard so many people say I didn't quite know what to expect and it exceeded their expectations which yeah. is, that's lovely. We'll work tomorrow but not today. Hoo John, can I can I get to Ryan? Today, today is a holiday. Hoo John, can I can I get to Ryan? To Ryan, oh to Ryan. John, can I can I get to Ryan? Surprise! We are by the river in Richmond for a special flash mob performance by Fisherman's Friends, by some of the cast members of Fisherman's Friends, the musical, which just happened and was really cool and very scenic. There's something authentic about that show with seagulls in the background. It made me think open air production when? Open water production when? <laughs> That'd be a really great way to tour. Just put all of the tour, ah, oh, instead of those big lorries, just get a really big, just barge, and just tour it round the rivers of the United Kingdom. No? No? Knowing the show, they spend hardly any time on the boat. No, I know, but like you make like a stage in the water. There's that, there's that theater in Europe Someone can tell me in the comments section which one it is that makes those amazing... They do like opera, I think. Oh, yeah. And they do like those amazing mm -hmm. sets in the ocean. Oh, the Minac. Oh, this would be great at the Minac. It would be, but first can we do the West End? Let's, let's, yeah, let's, yeah. You know, let's go big first. Let's do the West End revival. first. Yeah, then, we'll do, then we'll do the open water revival. I can be patient. Because look, look. You could have it here. This is perfect. This is perfect. Ah, oh, I'll be producing this 10 years down the line. Um, but yes, so now we're having a nice afternoon stroll along the river. <laughs> no, not here. I'm from the south. I'm used to seagulls. They nested in my chimney once. Seals! That sounds like a euphemism, but it's not. Sorry, seals? seals? Are there seals? Do we see any seals? No, but it's a seal guide. This is what I assume is the Thames. I'm assuming this is the Thames. Yeah, Richmond are from the Thames. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Ooh. Bless oh, you, madam. No That's not a seal. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we're going to do some seal spotting. This is very much the calm before the storm for us because it is now 42 minutes until the Olivier Awards begin to be announced. And at that point, everything's, everything's going to start kicking off. So having a nice, quiet stroll prior to that starting. Looking for seals. Oh my god, hey! Oh my god, hey! Because we are on our way to the press night of Oklahoma. Wouldn't it be crazy then if I was just like, oh, hello, Dolly? No, we're on our way to the press night of Oklahoma at the Wyndham's Theatre. Um, we did see it back at the Young Vic, 
Yes. Which is because we grabbed some like last minute return matinee tickets, yes. I feel like. Yes, it was. Um, so this is the first time actually seeing it properly in an official press capacity. And earlier today, it was nominated for I think the Seven. technical I think the technical term is a buttload yeah. of Olivier Awards. Seven. 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 Best revival of a musical. Best revival of a musical. It got <laughs> nominations in three out of four acting categories. Um, it got nominated for music. Best ambiguous music category. Yeah. Um, so yes, very excited for our return this evening, and it is busy. It is bustling oh, outside the theatre. It's very busy. We have had a busy day. Since we last saw you, we um, have been heading into Central. We had a, a sneaky little meeting, which I shan't tell you about, but was exciting. We're going to go in the theatre now. There you go. How great does Oklahoma look at the Wyndham's Theatre? I'm obsessed with this colour palette. There you go, Christopher Biggins on the red carpet. Why wouldn't he be? Oklahoma. Okie doke, we've made it inside the Wyndham's Theatre. Let's talk merchandise. You can see all of the prices going on as well. Got these little badges. Little badges there. We have magnets. Uh, can I get one of the we have key rings. Yes. We have pens. Okay. Oklahoma pens. Which number did I get? And then we have t shirts here. We've got, I believe this is the tote bag. There you go. Everything's going my way. We've got a spoon. It's an Oklahoma spoon. That's novel. That's exciting. And then another t shirt design over there, which is okay. Okay, here is the reveal you've been waiting for. This is what the Wyndham's looks like when it's been Oklahoma-fied. We've got this wood all over the stage, stretching out across the boxes as well, with a, with a, a handful of firearms on them as well. It's just so bright. It is so bright in this auditorium. Are there more guns than they had at the end of it? I don't remember this, this many guns. Do the people in these boxes know how many guns are on the front of these boxes? Does it affect the theatre going experience? Who's to say? So you've got band members down here and over here. Obviously the audience aren't still sat sort of around the stage, but we do have this little platform at the front and the little tassely things over the top up there. And this is what the stage looks like. So I'm sat in G13 of the stalls to give you some sense of how good my view is. Aaron's taking the obligatory program photo to my left. And we're here for the opening night of Oklahoma. We're very excited. Go, 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 go. Oh my God, hey. Hello. Hello, everybody. So, we are back from the opening night of Oklahoma. I can't remember how much I got the chance to tell you before, but like, really big audience response. Yes. Yeah. Rapturous audience response. Cute moment afterwards when people started to leave and stage management came on to clear yeah. and there was another spontaneous round of applause yeah, it was nice. for the stage management peeps, which was nice. Nice to see them recognised. Mm -hmm. I thought we'd show you some of the merch that we bought because I showed you what was available and that we were getting tempted. Um, Aaron's modelling one of the t-shirts here. If this reminds me of like the once merch, if anybody re remembers it. What does that say? I can't read it backwards. Chicks and... Chicks and ducks and geese. Better scary. So many geese today. So many geese today. While I was doing my Olivier's live stream, if anyone watched that, um, when it happened, when today is so many geese, so many geese. Better, better feed. I also bought the spoon. I got the spoon, everybody. It's appropriate because my cooking <coughs> is okay. It's just okay. I mean, right now it's not. Who has who has the time to cook? I certainly don't. But as and when I do, I will use this wooden spoon, or I'll just display it in the background of my videos. Ready? Okay. And an exclamation point. And then finally, these were free. Was that like yeah. an opening night thing or are they <laughs> always going to be there? I'm not sure. They were in front of the merch booth. Yeah. And I think they um, they definitely were free. The low K badges with the exclamation mark. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like what Come From Away did, which makes me think that they might stay free. Yeah. So I would say if you're heading to the Windows to watch it, maybe just, just head to the... Um, Merch brief and see if there's a little to a, a little bowl of badges. Yep, yeah, that was um, uh, the merch stand down adjacent to the front stall's left 
entrance, um, but usually they have one in the main foyer of the Wyndham's Theatre as well. And let me know if you also bought the spoon and and share recipes of things I can make with this spoon. I feel like I feel like I need to make a chili because that's what that's what they're cooking on stage. Mm. Not that they serve it in the UK. I know on Broadway you got chili, but in any case, spoon. Merchandise spoon. I'm happy with this purchase. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, hey! Hello! That's a nice little group. That was nice, that was a nice moment. We are here in London today. What show are we seeing, everyone? Grimmage Frank Oh, that was less successful. Can you tell it's not rehearsed? We are standing um, under cover on the side of the street because it's, it's not raining nearly as much as I'm dressed like it's raining. Um, but there is a slight. Are you okay there? I was out of the frame. You wanted to be involved. <laughs> There you but go. I'm out the frame. Oh my yeah. gosh. You're all very we're all needy. Stars. You're all very needy, but we're spelling it with a K because baking puns. Yeah. Um, we're here at the opening of the Great British Bake Off musical this evening. We're excited. Very excited. Three of us have seen it before. Ellie has not. I haven't even seen Bake Off. This is my theme for the year. I am. I'm seeing musical versions of things that I have no clue what the original is about. That's yeah. the best thing to do. That's my drama. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There you go. But we're very excited. Yeah. We're very excited. Um, we got to see a sneak peek of rehearsals the other day, which I showed you in a previous episode. Um, and, and we're very excited. We want to go and check out the merch selections. I want to go and check out the cake that you can actually buy, because <laughs> I can't watch an episode of Bake Off without eating a piece of cake, so I'm not I'm not about to watch a musical version without also eating cake. I may need cake for both acts, honestly. Like, jury's out. <laughs> jury's out as to what is going to be possible. Cake, cake flavored al alcohol beverage in the second yeah. act. I do like a cherry Bakewell cocktail. Yeah, mm -hmm. so or like a funfetti cocktail, that would be fun. Yeah. I wonder if they have any flavoured... They should do freak shakes. I mean, yeah. it's been a full day of cake-themed activities. I think we need to... Yes. We need to indulge. So the, the uh, Marie Antoinette playlist cake, it's like a kind of pop gig in the way that it can do it. One of our ideas was that we felt like um, uh, we wanted to sell a ticket as if Marie Antoinette was having her solo residency in Vegas. We were joking, Drew and I, like we've worked together before and, and I was saying to him, I'm actually scared at how easily accessible I am to Marie. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favourite cake and what's your character's favourite cake? Red Velvet. Oh my god, Red Velvet. And my character's is also Red Velvet. <laughs> <laughs> I just think this show is going to be really special and even, like I was just saying to be, when I'm at the side and I'm meant to still be in character watching them all do tax number, I'm meant to be like, oh, but I can't help but be like, <laughs> <laughs> so, honestly, I just feel so proud of everyone and how we've all like created this and like, they're dancing and they're just giving everything constantly and it's just so beautiful, um, so it's just been a joy. But yes, anyway, I'm going to show you what the theatre looks like now because we're all admiring it from across the road. So this is The Noel Coward. Um, Dear Evan Hansen fans, you may find this particularly triggering because this was the West End home of Dear Evan Hansen. Now, Bake Off. Can, can we like clarify? It didn't close because of Bake Off. Yeah, Sean wants this to be known. Honestly, there was another show beforehand. We go to Sean for the news. <laughs> another show beforehand, it yeah. didn't close. Dear Evan Hansen did not close for Bake Off, everyone. That's not how these things work. And in any case, there was another show in between. But look how cute the Noel Coward looks. Favorite detail, all of the bunting. The bunting you could Look at all this bunting, it looks like a, pli a, a primary a primary school playground up in here. Is this new bunting? I think it is new bunting. They've put up rainbow bunting. Yeah. Because yeah. like, it was pastel. Maybe that was, maybe that was a choice and they've just changed the aesthetic they're going with. I don't know. I like it. How was that, what was that pronunciation of pastel? Pastel. Pastel. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. We're going to go inside now because it's raining on my head. So we're doing the very important part of social media influencing, which is having photos taken as modelled by the lovely and handsome Aaron James and Ellie Talks Theatre in front of this particular poster and I told Ellie, laugh into a spoon like this woman is doing and um, it was pointed out to me, almost definitely this is meant to be singing because <laughs> it is the Bake Off musical. I thought she was laughing at a spoon this whole time. I don't know that I really thought about it. Well, spoons are pretty funny. But yeah. you know what's funnier? Sporks. Oh, 100%. 
That's a hilarious implement. Yeah. Here you can see some of the merchandise available at the Great British Bake Off. You can see some of them here as well. They have a spatula, tempted to get it to go with the wooden spoon we got at Oklahoma the other night. We have some badges, some enamel pin badges, a little key ring, a little fridge magnet. You can see the programs there. And down here, we have some cupcakes. So information about the cupcakes is over here. While supplies last, they do all contain gluten, sadly, but we have the ultimate chocolate cupcakes, the unicorn cupcakes, or the plant-based red velvet cupcakes. They are from Crumbs and Doilies, and they are five pounds. There you go. Everything you need to know about the Great British Bake Off musical, merchandise and cake. It's a very star-studded opening. Possibly one of the most star-studded I've been at. Yeah, and I think it's TV adjacent, that makes yeah. sense. It hadn't even occurred to me that there would be, but so many, first of all, so many Bake Off contestants, um, which is super cute, of years past, and they were all having a catch-up in the, in the Grand Circle Bar. That was so sweet. And all getting to know each other. That was lovely. That was very nice. Um, but yes, very exciting evening to be here at the Neil Coward for the Great British Bake Off musical. Yeah. Here it is, guys. It's the cake. This is the red velvet cake from Crumbs and Doilies. And I'm going to eat it now and give you a cake review. Or do I eat it like slowly throughout the first act? Yeah, have it like you would at a show. Yeah, I'm going to graze. I'm going to graze. I'll get back to you with a cake review at my own leisure. I shan't be rushed. I shan't. But look, look at this cake. It's quite big as well. It was a fiver. Like, I mean, they could have made this cake ten pounds. I would still have bought cake at this theatre, so they absolutely know what they're doing. But it comes highly recommended. So, looking forward to it. Looking forward to the cake. Okie dokie, we are now inside the auditorium. We're in the Grand Circle today. We're in B7, Aaron's in B7. Over yes. here, looking excited. I'm in B8, and this is our view of the stage. There you go. So, uh, there's four levels to the Noel Coward Theatre. You can see the stalls are down there, then you have the dress. This is the grand that we're in, and then the balcony's up there. Um, the front of the Grand Circle, not at all a bad view. Normally I'd be like, Grand Circle? Not so sure, but this is... Uh, this is not at all a bad view. You can see the curtain there, the Great British Bake Off musical featuring the Laughing Spoon. And we have, oh, we bought some merchandise. Aaron, model the spatula. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Let me show you. Let's see if I can get it to focus. This is, oh, there you go. The Great British Bake Off musical spatula. We love it. Oh my god, hey, Hello. we're in the interval. Yes. We're having a great time. Yes. Having a lovely time. Yes. I've cried twice. Yes. How about you? Probably once. Yeah. Um, it was like a half, like, I feel like I'm getting there. And then when the second time you cried, it was like the time when I was like, oh, my eyes are actually watering. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just, yeah, I'm so enjoying listening to everyone else reacting because we know the show. Yeah already but it was a very short out of town run that it had in Cheltenham um, yeah, like so I figure like not weeks. not many people do so for, yeah. for a lot of people it's a it's a surprise I think quite how yeah. um, show-stopping and exuberant it is but then also how much heart it has at the same time yeah. which is what I love about this show and what I've been telling everyone um, but yeah I'm now now that it's not a surprise we know the material that's coming up I'm now like finding new things to admire about yeah. the structure yeah, and me too. everything else and I like how it's been sort of um, oh upgraded aesthetically a little bit yeah. with the new set design. Projection. Yep, a few new jokes. Um, the opening of Act Two we've already had because it's moved because yes. it was the scone scone. Scone scone. It's no. It feels a bit nicer actually because it's like kind of short, like yeah. open to yeah. this bit. Yeah, the structure is what's really clever. Yeah. They clearly spend a lot of time. I mean, you have so much to work with with like the Bake Off concept. It gives you all of your material. Yeah. It's just like where do we put? each individual piece. How do you make it work as a musical? How do you make it work? How do you mix it all together? Yeah. There you go. Um, cake review. Red velvet cake review. So moist. So good. So good. Just delicious. I love I love a red velvet cake. It was... It's a decent size as well. It was a good size. And just like all of that lovely little oh, icing situation on top. Delicious. Um, really moist. Just 
just a really airy, light sponge. I loved it. And we're going to have to come back at least two more times so I can try the other cake. But that got, that got five out of five cupcakes from me to rank it, to rank it in cupcakes. We're going to enjoy the rest of the show now. Thank you for joining us for this interval chat. the show curtain. Very weird to see this curtain not at the Haymarket or at the other palace. So weird to see it here in a touring theatre, but very excited. And they've got their pre-show playlist going on. I forgot that they played uh, Mickey, as in, ah, oh, Mickey, where the pity? So that was, that felt like a personal tribute to me. I appreciated that this evening. We have returned from Heather's at New Victoria Theatre and we had a great time! We had a really great time! It was great to see the tour cast. It was really interesting to see Heather's in a theatre other than the other palace. So much bigger and it's also interesting to see how it played to a larger 
audience because it's a larger wall of sound. And hear a larger audience and hear <clears throat> like there was like a teenage schools group in yeah. who were having a great time, who were so like participatory but like in a really respectful way. Something quite funny actually that I realised was, mm -hmm. I know they're selling Heather Scrunchies, yeah. but this time it's not to throw them on the stage because if somebody tried to throw a, don't, actually this is a warning, please do not plan to throw scrunchies if you're going on the tour. That is another palace only thing because you will literally hit a man member. Yeah, yeah. Like, unless you can clear the pit, but also I feel like the people who are going to throw the scrunchies, all of the screaming was happening way yeah. up in the balcony. So unless they have, like they need those things that shoot the tennis balls for no, dogs. No, do not, do not. Okay. Do not, do not even, no. Okay. Ignore no, what no. you just said. Don't bring playful plastic Absolutely launching not. firearms to the theatre. That's irresponsible. Um, mm -hmm. I started this video because I want to show you my outfit. So I've got, a, oh, here we go. Okay. Hello. Hello. I've got a tartan scarf and my cute little red bag, which has nothing in it at the moment, but it's cute, with a tartan trouser with a tartan shoe. Show them the shoes. The shoes. This is really difficult because you can see a viewfinder and I can't. Okay, hold on. There we go. I think that's the... That's the, yeah, the shoes, the shoes. It's like a bit of a, a bit of a Heather Chandler moment. Heather's inspo-esque. There you go. Dress on theme, always. And for our final segment of the evening, we arrive at our Bristolian correspondent, Sean. You need a name for your segments. Uh, I'm trying to think of a, a West Country version of, oh my God, hey. I'll, I'll let you... Discover that. My lover. In any case, Sean, what have you been at this evening? You were not at Heather's. I was at Wicked this evening. And why were you at Wicked? For a very special first preview of Lucy St. Louis. And Alexia's return to Wicked. Yes, yes. New car. How's the hold on, hold on. Hold the monkey. Hold the monkey. Uh, you should be. Uh, just the tree. There we go. He's safe here, unlike poor Chistry on stage tonight who had a little accident. Bless him. Can you, re can you re can you reenact what happened for us it's with like, the monkey? I'm, I'm climbing, I'm climbing. Crap. <laughs> Recover. I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. That's why he needs wings. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, um, it was, it had a really special atmosphere and I was really glad to see it. There you go. Uh, definitely check them out. Um, Alexia's crazy. Obviously she's done it before and it just feels Twice. like, yeah, Twice. it just feels like she's so comfortable in the role already. And Lucy was super sweet and really hit all the emotional notes as Glinda. So it's gonna be it's gonna be special. Exciting. Get your tickets people. Maybe we will too. Maybe we will. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. We'll be back with more content tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god, hey! Hello. And Sean. <laughs> <laughs> we are back in London um, again. It's the day after yesterday, as which is what usually happens. Um, so, as in last night we were at Heather's, and tonight we are on our way to which theatre, anybody? The Garrick. The Garrick Theatre in beautiful unison to go and see the press night of Bonnie, Bonnie and Clyde. And Clyde. Bonnie. On our way to see Bonnie and Clyde at the Garrick Theatre. So we all saw this last year at the Arts. We did it twice. We did see it twice. We did see it twice. So it's right. Ah, Sean has to win. <laughs> so competitive. Um, but we're on our way. Very excited to see the slightly updated production. I like the pictures of the show curtain I've seen. Yeah. Those look cool. Slightly different cast. Um, and a different theatre, obviously. So heading, we are just now rounding the corner to the Garrick. And I'm expecting a very buzzy <laughs> evening of theatre. With the rain. In the rain, with a million people crammed into a very small foyer. But I'm happy to be here because I had concerns earlier in the day. It's been snowing in the UK. It has yep. snowed. Um, but as you can see around us, it is not still snowy. Didn't settle. Just wet. Just damp and grey. Oh, I can already see a hubbub. A hubbub of people. And I'll do my best to show you that hubbub and bring you a sense of the hubbub. Do we need to cross the road to get good pictures? Possibly. 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 I think we should. I've made a choice. We're doing it. I'm crossing and we'll cross back. Oh, the weather's horrible. Oh, just <laughs> awful. This is not pleasant at all. Much hubbub. Plenty of hubbub going on. I've said the word hubbub too many times now. It sounds weird. Oh, look at that. Okie dokie. You're not even ready. Here it is. The Garrick Theatre. For Bonnie and Clyde. You can see some of the press night activity going on. 
And look, look at how cool that poster is. That's light. It's got light on the little yes. outline of the heart there. That's so cool. Screw this bus <laughs> for ruining my cinematography. But yes, oh, Bonnie and Clyde looks very stylish at the Garrick, I will say. How exciting. We're gonna, we're gonna take some photos and then we're gonna cross the road and head inside. I can already see how full the foyer is. Oh God. We're an hour early. How is it always like this? Oh. Oh, West End theatres, never change. Oh my god, hey! So cool, and you want to say your names as well? Charlie, Danny. And all here at the Bonnie and Clyde press night. <laughs> Amazing, loving the Raise Little Hell t-shirt. Thank you. Very nice. I have, I have the put on. It's cold Okay, we've made it inside the building. We have merchandise prices, we have mugs, we have key rings, we have magnets, we have enamel pin badges, we have the back of the same mug. T-shirts, this is the t-shirt I'm wearing right now, fun fact. And we have the hoodie with the same logo on as well. We have a script, we have a program, we have a lovely tote bag. That's new since the last round, look at that bag. There we go. Most wanted merchandise for London's most wanted musical. Okie dokie, we have made it into the stalls. Aaron is taking the all-important program photo. And you can see, look at this, look at this very cool new and that's a projection of a still smoking bullet hole fragmenting the fourth wall. You can see what the proscenium looks like. You can see not too high a stage there, uh, but this is my view. I'm in B7 of the stalls. You'll notice B is not the second row. There is AA, BB, and then A and B. So B is actually the fourth row for this show. You can hear some of the pre-show music going on. There is much hubbub, many invited guests, celebs and the like, all ready for Bonnie and Clyde. So the second act is about to start. I just wanted to show you this show curtain. This one's an actual curtain. And then, oh look, it's Sean. Sean crossing at the front of the theatre. Oh dear. But yes, look how cool this curtain is. Bloodstained American flag. Perfect. Genius. Very Bonnie and Clyde. Gets you very ready for a song you're about to hear in the second act. Which is going to happen shortly. Thank you so much for watching this week's Oh My God Hey, I hope you enjoyed. Let me just remind myself of what we did and what they've just seen. So we went to Richmond to go meet the cast of Fisherman's Friends. Mm -hmm. We went to go and see shows like Heather's on tour. We went to go and see, what else have we seen? Bonnie and Clyde, Press Night of Bonnie and Clyde. Bake Off. Bake Off on Monday. What was the show from the week before? What was the evening of? We saw Fisherman's Friends halfway in the week. Oh, we did see Fisherman's Friends. That wasn't actually on this. I didn't take my camera to Fisherman's Friends, but we went to see Fisherman's yes. Friends in Richmond. What did we see the night of the Fisherman's Friends event? We were going back into town to go and see... The Olivier's had just been, Norms had just been announced. Oklahoma! Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Yeah. It was Oklahoma press night. We bought the spoon. We bought so much cutlery this week. It's insane. Is it called cutlery? Just kitchenware. We bought a lot of we bought a lot of theatrical kitchenware. Anyway, it's at this part of the video that we like to do our rose and thorn of the week. So hopefully now we remember enough <laughs> to actually talk about this. So what was the <coughs> highlight moment of the week, and what was the low point? Is anything jumping out at you to kick off this conversation? There's been a couple of joyous shows. Mm. So like, it's been kind of nice actually going to back to two shows that I already knew that I enjoyed. Yeah, we got to revisit some of our faves. Yeah. So like, see how Bake Off had changed and grown, mm -hmm. and then seeing... Grown, grown, grown. And seeing um, Fishman's Friends and seeing how that had 
slightly changed. It hadn't really changed much at all. Yeah. But like, it was it was nice to go and see two shows that I already knew that I enjoyed. Whereas, yeah. Because we spend so much time seeing new productions and not kind of going in a bit anxious because we don't know if we like it or not. Yeah. It was nice to kind of see shows that just. Yeah, it was kind of the theme of the week was revisiting because even Oklahoma and Bonnie and Clyde, we'd seen both of those before. Yeah. So there you go. The one um, really brand new thing to us that we got a sneak peek of this week was the cake rehearsal yes. that we got to go and have a look at, which was also very exciting. Um, so was that your rose? Was that your highlight? Just revisiting yeah, beloved so. shows. Um, mine might have been the red velvet cupcake I had at Bake Off. Just to be specific, um, it was delicious. It was very nice. And also, like, a lot of people... I'm not one to, like, drink during a show, because if I get a wine, normally it's in the interval, or it's pre-show, mm-hmm. and I'll finish it before the show starts, because I drink very quickly, um, which is why I don't get a second wine. But I don't normally, like, then carry that on throughout the show. But I was just enjoying, like, a mid-show cupcake, just sort of eating to myself. And that's a quiet food, so that's a good mid-show food. I'm not bothering anyone with my mid-show Red Velvet Cupcake. I've spoken about this for too long, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but thorns of the week. What was the low point? We had some train stress. Yeah, we had train stress. There was yeah. a lot of train stress. Yeah. I think the other one, like a generic one, if we're talking about the past two weeks, is probably feeling sad about snubs for Olivier's. Yes. Because it does, it does like stay with you for a bit and you kind of then go, oh. Yeah, bittersweet. Yeah, I kind of, I think maybe that because that kind of lasted a few days of then talking about like, wow, why has this happened or why has that happened and like it's still an ongoing conversation about like categories that should be there, categories that shouldn't be there. Yeah, and that shouldn't be a niggle for two weeks. Yeah, but unfortunately, it is. Yeah, um, I can't think of anything worse than that. It's still really cold. It's really oh, cold. I'm very cold. Snowed. It did snow, but the snow wasn't a problem. It then rained on Bonnie and Clyde Day. But I feel like I feel like it isn't a problem. Oh, that's my thorn. That's my thorn. I love the Garrick. I, lo- uh, I like the Garrick Theatre. Yes. And I don't know why. It's so crazy to me. Just like everyone's social on a press night. It's all actors and producers and critics and all sorts of theatre industry people. It's a who, very small world where who, everybody knows each other. And hasn't seen each other in a while. So there's so much catching up. There's so much like... I could have spent another half hour in the interval to be like, oh, hi, oh, hi, um, which was lovely. It's lovely to see people. But it means on a press night, it's so social. And the Garrick Theatre is not conducive to that much socialising. It's just not big enough. And they don't have, like, breakout spaces um, because it's one of these cramped old theatre buildings. Not even just the social, like, on that case, though. But, like, it's interesting it having its stores, but at the back of the stores. Yeah. And, like... Which, weirdly, should be a good thing, because it means that in the interval when you need your drinks, you're not going to go out and travel up. You yeah, can just stay but this there. is another thing. is like on a regular show day, some people will go to the bar, and then on a press night, everyone is going to the bar. So it just becomes chaos, and you get this monstrous <coughs> bar queue, and you're in the way wherever you are. So that was, that was my thorn. Enjoyed the show, did not enjoy the press night vibe inside. I liked the vibe outside. Yeah. Had a nice time outside. What's inside the stalls? Stressful. Stressful. Yeah. Um, But that has been our stage a week. Like I said, there's another one of these coming next week. We have another three or four theatre trips. When it drops next week, we will be in New York. Oh my gosh, we will. When you're watching next week's episode, we will be in New York. That's insane. It's very weird. I can't even cope with that. We're both losing (laughs) our minds. Um, But again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss all of that content. It's going to be very exciting. I mean, we're very excited. Well... And scared. Yeah. <laughs> Excited and scared. Thank you so much for watching this week's Oh My God Hey. I hope that everyone is staying safe. Oh, emoji. Oh, yes. Um, Can it be a spoon or a cake? No, we did cake. We did cake. Is there a spoon emoji? I think there is. We Should bought spoons this week. Oh, there's one. I know there's one that's like a bowl with a spoon sticking out. Something like kitchenware. I think. Kitchenware, yeah. I, th- I think that's the vibe. Any form of kitchenware, because people, yeah. people are getting... Be inventive. Yeah. Yeah, personal preference. Like, 
go with the emoji that speaks to you. Um, but if you've made it this far in the video, uh, let us know by commenting down below uh, with another response or but include a, a kitchenware themed emoji. There we go. We've got that to look forward to. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>